I think I've worked something out, and I will preface this by saying it's just a theory, and with all theories, they can be right, they might be wrong, but this is where my head is at, and I think it's a pretty solid one. I would love to hear what you guys think. Now obviously, Dave Filoni wants us to be asking questions after this trailer dropped, but ever since our first look at Tales of the Empire came out, fans want to know who this mysterious, luminous character is. The first time I saw this, the first time she appeared in the trailer, I thought this might be a witch, one of the Dathomirian witches, part of Morgan Elsbeth's clan, the Singing Mountain clan. But they also appear in the poster for the show. And then I really started to have a think. I've seen some fans say, this might be Ahsoka, but upon closer examination, the face doesn't match. I don't think it is. This person doesn't even look too much like a Togruta. I would say her face is more Mary Allen, like Barris. And so herein lies the bulk of my theory. I suspect this is Master Luminara Unjuli, the former master of the Jedi turned Inquisitor Barisofi, who initially survived Order 66. And I think this miniseries, which drops on May the 4th, is taking the opportunity to fill in a big gap in her story. She initially survived the Great Jedi Purge, but then she was imprisoned and captured, as we learn about in Star Wars Rebels, and killed. But you see, the actual date of her arrest on Kashyyyk is an estimate. 18 BBY to 15 BBY, but this is easily changeable if Dave Filoni so desires. All we know is that the Grand Inquisitor was present when she was killed. After a short time in prison on Stygian Prime, she was executed in her cell, and as we see in Star Wars Rebels, the Grand Inquisitor kept her remains for the purpose of entrapment, just like for Kanan Jarrus and Ezra. Now, considering the Grand Inquisitor is a major part of Barriss's arc in this show, taking her under his wing and training her to become an Inquisitor herself, one of her trials might be to kill her former master. And another hint this is Luminara is the disheveled cloak look. I guess the question is, why is she on Dathomir? Did her former apprentice have to lure her there? The assumption has always been that Luminara spent her final days on Kashyyyk, but she may have been arrested elsewhere. Even Kanan Jarrus says they didn't know the specific location. Now, while the Grand Inquisitor was using her bones and insisted she died soon after Order 66, we don't know the exact year, so there is a lot of time they can fill in. The canon for this time period is up in the air, so anything is possible if Dave Filoni wants. Maybe Barris reached out to Luminara to set a trap. She may have fought her before her former master was arrested. Luminara was very troubled by her Padawan's turn to the dark side, so a final confrontation could be epic. And notice they also made a visual reference by having Barris wear the same prison outfit that Luminara wore in the Rebels episode. And a final hint is the white light, which could be a visual reference to Luminara's name, derivative of Illumination. Even later in the timeline as a false ghost, she says, in the night, find the light. And now, my dear friends, we actually have another reveal for Tales of the Empire. The fourth sister who first appeared in Kenobi now has a name, just like Kreva, has a first name, but is formally called the third sister. The fourth sister's name is Lynn. It's cool to get to see more of the Inquisitors expanded upon. And it's not just those from Kenobi, but Ahsoka Season 1 and Tales of the Jedi, the animated anthology series that precedes this one. So for the next part of this video, my dear friends, I want to stay on the subject of Star Wars animation and focus on some smaller aspects of the most recent two episodes of The Bad Batch Season 3, something which dawned on me is how the new episodes have just given a lot of context to something from the Jedi Fallen Order games, Fallen Order and Survivor. This concerns Eno Cordova's holocron, that contained a list of every known Force-sensitive child in the galaxy. The Bad Batch's third season has recontextualized so much of our understanding surrounding the brutality of the Empire's regime, and in this case, the use of the blood of innocent younglings. It makes the reason they nearly successfully stole the holocron all the more ominous, because now we know how long Palpatine had been working on Project Necromancer. It was an easy way for bounty hunters and inquisitors, sent by Palpatine and Hemlock, to track down younglings with a high midichlorian count, so episode 10 Identity Crisis just gave an even darker twist to what is already an intense, beloved game. And I suppose this is another reason the hidden path, Tanalore, and all of the efforts to protect Force Sensitives was doubly important. The Hidden Path is therefore a bastion, a safe haven, and sanctuary from Project Necromancer, but there are still gaps that need filling. Some of the Empress' plans are going to come into play in the third Jedi game. But on the subject of the most recent episodes of The Batch, StarWars.com have provided some new details in their episode guide. 
Now a major aspect of the episode that's been really stumping Star Wars fans is the hypocrisy of Cad Bane, who later in the timeline in the Book of Boba Fett admonishes Boba when talking to Cobb Vanth for having worked for the Empire when Cad is doing the same in this show. So is this a contradiction? Is Cad Bane being a hypocrite? I think the answer is yes, but I also believe there is more to the story than we think. I posited this the other day, I think Cad Bane is going to be screwed over by the Empire. Or, despite having kidnapped four sensitive children for Palpatine before, he isn't aware of Project Necromancer and then finds out. Alternatively, we're misunderstanding Cad Bane's words. It's possible we're reading too deeply into what he was trying to say. I think it was a fear tactic, because someone like Cobb Vanth would have remembered how evil the Empire was. To associate the new daimyo with our regime was intended to shock. And yes, Cad Bane is being hypocritical from a certain point of view, but he was just trying to protect his interests, which by then was working for the Pike Syndicate and ensuring they rule over Tatooine. He was an enforcer. But look, my dear friends, we have four episodes to go, and at some point, whether it's in this series or elsewhere, they might explain why Cad Bane ended up having a negative view of the Empire. It might be as simple as him knowing exactly what he's doing, trying to make money, knowing it's scummy, knowing it's bad, knowing how immoral it is, but to him it's just business. As he says, he's good at his job, and so as long as the money comes in, he doesn't care about who he's working for. In my full episode breakdown, we spent quite a lot of time discussing the Empire kidnapping false sensitives, and the parallel to how the Jedi did the same. Well now, my dear friends, we know the species and the name of the adorable false sensitive baby, who is from a familiar species we saw in Solo A Star Wars Story. This species, which StarWars.com describes as a hamster-like species, is called Talifa. We saw two Talifas in Identity Crisis, the mother is called Eilish, and the baby, Byron. And a new little easter egg is that in addition to having a stuffed toy, a plush toy of his species, he also has a stuffed gran, the same species as Mohonic, Reyes, and Arsgak. He also has a stuffed Tals. Some more reveals from the Identity Crisis episode guide include the fact episode 10 was the first episode, according to StarWars.com, that doesn't feature any current or former member of the Bad Batch. Another interesting tidbit about the specimens, the young force sensitive children, is that one of the holographic games they play in the vault is nicknamed Impossible Stack, and the second game, seen in the episode, is nicknamed Tower Puzzle, and it features a series of rings that must be rotated and moved to create a cylindrical shape. A new addition this week in terms of Star Wars canon is the planet Karad. This is the planet that the two Talifars lived on. In episode 11, Point of No Return, did you know an iconic Clone Wars voice actor returned in a much smaller role than he's used to? Matt Lanter, the voice of Anakin Skywalker, is who voiced the droid attendant, Ollie. And did you know, the device used to bring Fee's droid Mel on and off her ship is similar to the suction tube we see in A New Hope, the one the jar was employed to pull R2-D2 out the sand crawler. I love these little connections. So those are the reveals, my dear friends. What did you think? of episodes 10 and 11, and are you looking forward to episode 12 Juggernaut in just a couple of days time? Share your thoughts on everything we spoke about in the comments down below, and if you enjoyed this video, please be sure to give me a big fat thumbs up, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you in the next video. May the force be with you, always.